Hey, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're working on this steel top pan 192C. It's not, uh, it's kind of bogging down and then when you turn it sideways, it keeps bogging out. So we're gonna take a look and fix it. Chainsaws, trimmers, push mowers. I do the stuff all the time. Chainsaws, trimmers, push mowers. Now it's time for the neighborhood go-to guy. All right, so we'll start this up and see what it sounds like and we'll go from there. <laughs> Alright, so as you heard, it died out at idle. I guess it didn't matter if it was perpendicular or horizontal. Uh, the first thing I checked was to see if there's enough fuel in there. And there is. And that the fuel filter itself is sitting down in the fuel, which it is. Sometimes if that's not sitting all the way down and you're running low on fuel, it's not sucking in the fuel. So that's not it. So I'm going to take the uh, back off and we're going to take a look at the carburetor. All right, so we'll loosen the air filter cover and pop off the air filter. And there's two eight millimeter bolts or five sixteenths. Uh, actually nuts, not bolts. We'll take those off. I'm going to take mine off with the impact. When I put it back on, I'll use a hand wrench because you want to over tighten those and break something. Then we can take this cover off and then we'll get down here into the carburetor. All right, so next we're gonna to wanna to pry this little choke lever tab out. Once you get it out, you can pull it right off. So next I'm gonna take off the bar and cover and the chain, and then we're gonna come down here and take another T25 screw out. I did that is because you can see the orange lever back here that's uh, attached to the uh, throttle linkage, and we have to get up in there, which we have to get through the handle. We have to take this little part off here, and we'll be able to disconnect it from the from the top that way the whole carburetor slides out once we detach the fuel line the whole carb should pull out then so i went ahead and removed the three t20 screws one two and three and now we'll carefully pry this open you might need a screwdriver and we'll just pop this cover off and didn't want that to happen because i wanted to show you how to put that back together so I'll have to fix that quick. And the whole purpose of taking this, this off was to just push this down and in so that we could release that and get the carburetor out. But now I have another mess I gotta fix. Now it might need a little persuasion, but in this case, I just loosened a little bit, pulled it right out. We're gonna take the screws out of the top side, screw out the bottom side, inspect it, and see if there's anything in there. Could be a welch plug clogged up, who knows, we'll take a look. Okay, so I took the metering side diaphragm off. It doesn't look terrible in there, but look at this. This thing is stiff as a board. There's no give to it, so this metering diaphragm is not working properly. I know it's kind of hard to see, but trust me, it's stiff. It needs a new carb rebuild. So how do we figure that out? Well, we want to look at the carburetor and it'll have markings on it somewhere. This is a Zama. And if we keep spinning it somewhere on here, okay, there's the information we need. So when we go to Zama website or we go to the store, we figure out it is a C1Q S135A, 235A. So when you go to the Zama website or you go to the store, that's the information you're going to need. Not a bad idea to take the carburetor with you if you can go to a store and get the carb kit. So we'll clean the carburetor out, we'll install the new carb kit, and we'll put it all back together. It's a huge mess right now, but that's what we got to do. My favorite row in the hardware store. Ooh, I love ladies. So I skipped ahead a little bit and I forgot I didn't take a video. So where am I at now? I put the one screw back in that I took off here. I installed the carburetor with the new gasket, uh, the metering diaphragm also. Uh, put the four screws back in, pushed it in, connected the fuel line, put the uh, choke lever back on, and now I'm about to get back into the mess I made when I took the throttle uh, linkage and stuff apart. First part we're going to attach is the throttle linkage here. See the orange part and that little pin? 
push, push that back into that little slot. The next step is very difficult to do with one hand, so I'm going to attempt to try and explain it to you like this. This is the bottom of the throttle, and that sets in there like this. This piece goes, it sits in like this, basically. And this little spring here, this is the bottom, that's the bottom, so that is going to go around like this. You see how it has a little notch cut out? It's going to go around this and hook in right here. And then we'll put that in there. And then we'll attach this link here. So I'm going to do it. Next clip is going to look like it's all done. Do apologize. I can get that shot for you, but that's what it's going to look like. And this side here goes over here like that, and then over here. And now that that's secure, we'll go ahead and put the other half of the handle back on with the three screws. Alright, since the side cover is back on with the three screws, we went ahead and attached the air filter cover. And then we'll put the 5 16 nuts or 8 millimeter, whichever, tighten those two down. Then reattach the air filter and then the back cover. And I think before I put the bar and chain and the cover back on, I think I'm going to take this little screw out and check the screen arrestor just to make sure that that's not clogged up either. Not sure if I mentioned I took this part off earlier. That just slips in here and snaps on. Just gotta line these up and don't break the tabs. All right, so you break that flathead screw loose. And it appears the owner of this saw is never gonna have a spark screen arrestor problem because he decided to take it out or, well, I don't know any story. I just know there's no spark screen arrestor in this one. The only thing left now is to put on the cover and the bar and chain, bar and chain first, then the cover, tighten the nut back down. We'll fire it up, see how we did. See how we did. Seems to be fixed to me. Runs good, idles good. Thanks for watching, YouTubers.